Thank you for joining us today. This is Kevin Benedict, mobile industry analyst, tomato farmer, and blogger. Again, thank you for joining us, and I have with me today as guest, Philippe Winthrop from the Enterprise Mobility Forum. Thank you for joining us today, Philippe. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? Good. So I imagine you're dialing in from the Boston area. Yes, uh, as opposed to seat 7C on United, yes. Yes, very good. Well, I'm calling in here for this podcast from beautiful, sunny Boise, Idaho this morning. Um, why don't you share with our listeners today a little bit about who you are, Philippe, and what's your background and what you're up to here with the Enterprise Mobility Forum? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that, Kevin. So um, I spent the better part of 15 years in the analyst community working at companies such as IDC, Aberdeen Group, and Strategy Analytics. I've covered a number of areas, including uh, IT services, and for the last five-plus years, a uh, deep focus on enterprise mobility, uh, looking specifically at how organizations or leveraging mobility solutions in the workplace and thinking about uh, the implications around managing that, supporting it, uh, the entire IT life cycle of mobility within the workplace. And about, oh gosh, just over a year ago now, uh, I decided to branch out and create the Enterprise Mobility Foundation, which is a think tank that provides uh, unbiased information on enterprise mobility, and we do that through the free resource, which is the Enterprise Mobility Forum. And the Enterprise Mobility Forum is the largest and fastest growing social network dedicated to enterprise mobility, where you can find blogging from subject matter experts, including yourself, Kevin. Uh, you can download free research. You can see all sorts of uh, tweets, videos, news, PowerPoints, press releases, what have you on over 50 different topics on enterprise mobility, plus on top of which there is that uh, social networking component so you can connect with people with like-minded interests. And right now we're almost at 1,800 members in, in just about one year now. So again, uh, definitely the largest and fastest growing social network and community uh, wholly dedicated to enterprise mobility. Well, that is exciting, and thank you for sharing that. Yes, I have a, an account on the Enterprise Mobility Forum and visit there regularly. So I want to thank you for sharing and for setting this up as just a, a great resource for all of us who are involved in enterprise mobility. Um, you made a statement just a moment ago, which I want to just have, do a follow-up question on. You talk about life cycle. Mm -hmm. What do you mean around um, enterprise mobility life cycle management? Yeah, so there are a number of different factors within mobility in the workplace. Obviously, the, the most tangible touch point is going to be the device itself, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, uh, even, even to a certain extent, depending on how you define mobility in the workplace, laptops. But let's, let's talk here focusing solely on smartphones and tablets, basically hardware that's running a mobile OS such as uh, Android, uh, iOS, Windows Phone 7, BlackBerry, Symbian, what have you. Got it. So what we're talking about is that there are three components to how organizations need to look at mobility in the workplace. The first part is absolutely ongoing. There is no beginning and there is no end. It's how is mobility going to impact your business? How are you going to have to re-engineer your business processes to mobilize not just your infrastructure, but your actual employees, your customers, and your prospects? How are you going to be able to interact with them? Then there's a second component, which actually has a three to five year uh, time horizon, if you will, and that's mobility management. Really looking at the infrastructure that you need to purchase to manage the devices that are going to be in your environment or even being connected to your environment. The last part is life cycle management, and that is very specific to the hardware itself. Okay. When an individual buys a new device or you provide the employee a new device, and after 18 to 24 months, that device is going to get retired and or replaced. And right. so there, that's where device management itself kicks in. 
is managing the device itself, not the applications, not the expense reporting, not the security, but the physical ongoing management of the device to ensure that it is working according to what the organization has set up. Sounds almost like enterprise asset management for mobile devices. It, it is. It, I mean, device management is really about the asset management, but then you can start splitting hairs if you want, Kevin, and say, is asset management the same as inventory management, which is uh, tracking and visibility of the devices, simply being aware of their existence as another endpoint on the IT network. So again, there, there's a lot of confusion, unfortunately, and you know this as well as uh, better than I do, in fact, that uh, there is so much confusion right now around what device management is, what mobility management, what life cycle management is, and we make the argument at the Enterprise Mobility Foundation that device management is part of life cycle management, including the procurement, the provisioning, the ongoing support, aka device management, and the retirement. But that's just the, the, the third layer uh, below mobility management, and below that, uh, and mobility management, I'm sorry, is below having an, an ongoing mobility strategy. Understood. So we, there's a number of acronyms in that same area. One is EMM for Enterprise Mobility Management, and then right. MDM for Mobile Device Management. How do you see the difference between those two? Yeah, well, again, the, the, we, we were touching upon that a little bit just now. Um, yeah. There's a lot of uh, confusion, and EMM and MDM are continuously being used interchangeably. Okay. And, you know, one of my personal missions is getting on my soapbox every day and saying we need to make sure that we understand the distinction. Mobility management is more than just the device. Mobility management is all the infrastructure you need to have in place for the application management, for the security, for the service management, for the operational support, for the help desk, for obviously for the expense management. So it's really how is the organization going to have the tools in place and the processes in place to manage mobility in the workplace, whereas device management is a very specific set of functionality and requirements directly relating to the device. There's a lot more than just the device in question with mobility. You know, earlier this week I wrote an article that was talking about endpoints and the mobile data from an mm -hmm. enterprise in that what's really important <clears throat> to a company is not necessarily how, the, what, how to manage devices, but how to manage the corporate data. Right, and I, right. I had just thrown that out there as a, as a thought because as mobile devices become almost disposable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, there's an important role to make sure that you understand how your data is being accessed and used by those devices, but the devices are almost irrelevant. It's your data and how your data is secured. What's your thoughts on that? Well, at the end of the day, you know, so much for the last, gosh, 12 to 18 months was this whole debate around individual versus corporate liability of a device. And, and right. you know, for some time I said, guys, we need to stop talking about liability and focus more on responsibility. Take out the negativity uh, and really say it doesn't matter at the end of the day who owns the device because especially with mobility, the, the line has been completely blurred in terms of when you're working, when you're not, uh, and the kind of information that can be stored on those devices. But to your point, the most important part, irrespective of who actually owns the device, who bought the device, who's paying for the, the device, again, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet is absolutely irrelevant. As soon as you start accessing your corporate email on a device, that's corporate data. Yeah, that, it is. Then, that, that becomes then... Yes, a liability for the company. And as such, organizations need to develop a plan, a strategy around both business and IT policies, basically the do's and don'ts um, of what an employee can do with their device in terms of accessing sensitive corporate information. And if organizations don't consider their email sensitive, well, I'll, I'll challenge them and tell them to reconsider that. You know, I was talking to some consultants in the UK the other day about this very subject, and they brought up the fact that in their world, 
they're wanting to monitor the life cycle of the data itself, meaning, right. you know, once it leaves the corporate, where does it go before it dies? And who has access and who can view it? And I just thought that was an interesting perspective. <laughs> well, well, it is, but he, here's a mistake in that, in that thought process. The data never dies. You know, I mean, with the Internet now, you know, yeah. and everything being available on sites, you know, we can, we can easily search for information that was created decades ago. You know, there, there is no erase button, unfortunately and unfortunately. Oh, yeah. That, go, that goes back into the whole issue around governance and uh, policy management and security. And when I say policies, it's not just, again, the physical policies on the device, but how are people going to be able to access the information and what is their fiduciary responsibility uh, and, and responsibility from a governance perspective on accessing and leveraging and manipulating that data? <laughs>